welcome to the Tyrant Sin for the second time today. So here's the thing. The last time I recorded a video, which I thought for sure is going to do really super well, relatively speaking to me, a guy doing a reaction channel in 2023 that they only started a couple months ago, it did pretty good. But another video that I recorded that day on a whim did way super better and is easily my absolute top grossing video so far today. And by grossing I mean views not money because it's only got like 350 views so far but that's big for where I am. So I thought I was going to kind of try and experiment with that today. Um, so everybody really liked me reacting <laughs> to someone talking about a slow moving dark ride so how about a fast moving the amount of light varies depending on whether or not they are a subway train type thing it's also shorter okay so if, if you're still here then um, I think I'll let you know that I'm just basically going to catch up completely on my strong bed emails tomorrow so you know that and then eat a bunch of raisinets and here we go. In the last two months and years, I spent a lot of time talking about high-speed rail networks around the world. But high-speed rail often looks and works completely differently from one place to another. Which raises the question, how would I rank the world's top 10 high-speed rail networks? Let's find out. And that's just an important question, because like, if you look at this guy's video, he's always like, no, this is the best high-speed rail. This is the biggest high-speed rail system. You know, just lots of things like that. It's very vague, so it's kind of good to get a definitive list. Hey there, my name is Reese, and I run a channel called RM Transit about fast trains, and sometimes top 10 lists. If you enjoy this video, make sure to like and consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. Before we dive into the ranking, I think it's worth talking- Obviously, that is the same for this reaction video. Really experimenting. Talking about a little caveat in my methodology. Because that's not so much that I'm actually editing anything, of course. That's pretty fundamental to how I'm doing this ranking. Ultimately, I'm trying to rank based on the best network. Not the largest network, but the best network. The networks that I think other countries would benefit from emulating. Basically, China is a big... No, incidentally, my money says, um... Tokyo. country and it will have a big network and it has to actually be good and not just large to do well on this list because I'm interested in quality not just quantity having three bad high-speed rail lines is wow. probably worse than having one really good high-speed rail line now if you're curious how I actually went about the ranking process Google bubble sort and watch the video with the dancers he'll thank me later and so with that let's dive into the ranking in 10th place today we have Morocco Morocco is still relatively new to high-speed rail. In fact, you might not even- I guess that means the U.S. isn't even going to show up on the list. So Morocco, good for them. They're, that's a cool country. And realize that Morocco has it, given its first line opened in 2018, connecting Tangier to Casablanca with 320 km per hour high-speed rail, at least for a large- you hear that? Tangiers, which is an awesome name, and Casablanca, which you all know somewhere in the back of your head has something to do with Hollywood. I'm saying it that way because I I don't think anyone who's actually old enough to have watched Casablanca is watching this. Large part. These are some of the biggest cities in the country. Now this project is an epic, being Africa's first foray into world-class high-speed rail, something that the Flash continent has gotten to before the Americas. There. It also uses TGV Euro Duplex, oh, high-speed double-decker rolling stock, which I still think is probably underused globally. There are a lot of very busy mm -hmm. high-speed rail lines out there. Despite the great service that runs Jeez. roughly hourly all day long, some people have suggested that Morocco's top priority probably shouldn't have been building high-speed rail when its regular railways could probably also use the investment. But ultimately, that ship has sailed, true. and today, Morocco has a really impressive singular piece of transportation yeah. infrastructure in its high-speed rail. Next up, in ninth place, we rail. have the UK. The UK doesn't really have a lot of true high-speed rail, though it does have a lot of fast, but not quite fast enough railways. Thankfully, the UK isn't all that big, and the numerous 200 km per hour capable electrified rail lines with vast multiple unit trains are pretty great at getting people around, even without true world-beating high-speed rail everywhere. 
The one proper high-speed rail line in the UK currently is HS1 in the southeast, which is really cool for its high-speed commuter services, but unfortunately, in general, for services that operate on high-speed 1, as well as the channel tunnel, the fares are extremely high, and so the infrastructure kind Oy. of goes underused. Well, yeah, HS2, that. the UK's plan to connect oh, Birmingham, speaking, Manchester, yeah. and almost to Leeds in the future is promising its overuse of tunneling and massive station works will mean that the project is probably going to be one of the most expensive high-speed rail systems ever built. So that's the UK. Number eight is Taiwan. Taiwan is really oh, underappreciated for its high-speed rail, which is world-class and runs 350 kilometers per hour across basically the entire west coast of the island. The line hits most major cities and allows easy travel, even for commuting in some cases. This is part of what has made Taiwan such a major technology hub because companies there can treat the entire island as a giant labor market. Eh. What's even more cool though is Taiwan imported slick. Oh, incidentally, uh, this is amusing to me because I'm specifically got into this um, to kind of help the, the world building role playing side of things um, when playing Tropico, specifically Tropico 6, because I, I really want to get a good island running where there's just no car garages. Everyone has to use buses and trains. Japanese Shinkansen EMUs, which are some of the fastest and highest performance high-speed trains in the world, and just look cool. Uh, Interestingly though, in Taiwan, they operate on high-speed rail straight. infrastructure built to European standards because of a weird way the project was procured. Now, of course, despite all of these good features, Taiwan's right. high-speed rail system is not perfect. Like a lot of systems, stations in many places are not all that close to the city center, and that means sometimes inconvenient travel from the station to your actual final destination in a certain city. At the uh, same time, Taiwan's legacy TRA railway network and its infrastructure are in a pretty poor state given the rest of the country's quite impressive transit systems. So that's Taiwan. In seventh place, we head back to Europe for Germany. Germany I've been surprised a lot. I've had a lot of people hear trains and just kind of assume Germany would be high up there, but this ain't a European game. It's a new world game. You need that open space building infrastructure. That's why I wasn't too surprised to see Morocco on the list in the first place. They're kind of rapidly becoming new world. I mean, Africa kind of all gets that free pass because we went, you know, us in Europe went through and destroyed so much that would be taking up the old world space. a rather interesting place for high-speed rail. There's a lot of impressive infrastructure that is used by high-speed trains, and there's a ton of different high-speed corridors all over the place. At the same time, Siemens, a German company, has been yeah. incredibly successful. Everyone, a second to laugh at the name Siemens. Successful at exporting high-speed slick Velaro EMUs to all kinds of places around the world, from Spain to Turkey to China. What's great is that like in most European countries, trains also travel straight to the legacy downtown city center station, mm -hmm. meaning that you are right in the center of the action when you arrive on the ICE. And compared to some other countries, even some smaller places do get ICE service. But despite all of this, many believe that the German trains are best off outside of Germany. And that's because of a number of network problems that hold Germany back and prevent it from ranking higher on this list. Uh, yeah. Uh, it reminds me of a fun bit, um... Hey, if anyone watches Foil Arms and Hog, love love them. Um, they, they do their, um... The, the, whole, the whole passport check thing, and you have this one who's like, Oh, in order to get in Germany, you have to answer these questions. Uh, what's always on time? And the joke what And they're like, Oh, the trains are on time! And to which every German person in the, in the comments was like, No, they are not! The biggest and most obvious one is that while Germany does have a lot of high-speed rail corridors, they aren't linked together into Ooh, coherent routes yeah. that could actually carry passenger journeys from one city to another. That means that there are very few high-speed routes that actually have what would be considered world-class average speeds, since while you might be going very fast on the dedicated high-speed line, you're going to have to travel a lot of legacy lines as well. Now, a big part of why Germany hasn't been able to build as much high-speed rail as some other countries includes nimbyism, but also excessively strict technical standards when compared to France, for example. International connections are also less impressive than you might expect. I talked about it in my Benelux high-speed rail video, but the connection into the Netherlands and Belgium is not great. For number six, we have Korea. Oh, Korea definitely has there. underappreciated high-speed rail, despite having far more high-speed rail zombie movie crossovers than any other high-speed eh. rail nation. The Korean high-speed rail network already connects to most of the country's large okay. cities. 
Yeah, see, and look at that. Right there, you can already see some interconnection that we just weren't seeing over in Germany. Very nice. Got the you know, the little red line is kind of on zone because it's not too far from the purple here. Uh, you you, know, you can absolutely just yellow up to green, down to blue, and up to light blue. And that's that's basically connecting you know to a couple of coastal places there. Yeah, well, you know, you can light blue up to there, up to purple, and then it's just a quick trick of the red. And knowing high speed rails, there's a good chance it would take you less time to go all the way up here to found to here than it would be just across from here to here. Also, I mean, South Korea, a lot, lot of balance as I understand it. And projects are underway to connect up to the rest. The country has also been really quick to develop its own domestic high speed trains, despite not being incredibly famous for its railway engineering, something that probably should change. This is stuff you might not believe if you saw the incredible high-speed flyovers or the second high-speed rail connection into Seoul largely built in tunnels. Unfortunately though, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, there are a few zombies lurking in Korea's yeah. high-speed rail hopes. For one, the country is late to EMUs, even though it's developing its own homegrown platform so it can shed its French origins. The network's trains and stations also aren't all that visually impressive compared to some of the other systems I'll discuss on this list. That's it, because if there's one thing I love more than a good train, it's a good train station. I freaking love train stations. I'll also say the network isn't helped by the fact that the Incheon Airport KTX services are no longer operating. I understand that perhaps they weren't super popular, but Incheon is a major airport and it feels to me like there's a huge value in connecting it to high-speed rail. So maybe I'm wrong, let me know in the comments, but I'm a little disappointed that that isn't still a thing that's happening. The last issue that really faces the Korean high-speed rail network is that like in a lot of countries that have a main dominant city, in this case Seoul, all of the high-speed rail lines kind of feed into Seoul, but if you want to go between secondary cities, it's a little more challenging. This is exacerbated by the fact that Seoul is in the northwest corner of Korea. It's kind of like up here, which means that it's indirect to travel through Seoul for a lot of trips where it might make sense if it was in, say, the middle of the country. Anyways, if you're interested in more Korean RM transit content, make sure you're subscribed sure because I'm going to be doing a Seoul subway up. explainer Not pretty soon, up. hopefully. In fifth place, we have the country that taught Korea how to build a high-speed train before France. they determined they should probably just do what Japan and Germany do. France. <laughs> France is famous for its nationwide high-speed rail network that is probably the most famous and well-branded. And I've been on these trains. These trains are nice. The stations are nice. I personally prefer the Italian stations. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice thing they got going on in France. You get almost a feeling like you're wa like waiting for a plane. You know, this that's the experience switching from America, where our train system is quite frankly an apology. You know, yeah, Grand Central Station aside, it's an apology. Um, yeah, like a few places in Chicago, but like, like well, we've got a big train station over here where I am, San Jose. It's an apology. Um. I mean, even my personal favorite local train station, it's not like a big fancy one. It, you know, it's just a cement block. But that's like hidden behind like a Costco or something. I like it though. I weirdly like that. It's got kind of nostalgic value to me. Um, but then you switch over there, you go over to France, and it's, it's a whole different vibe. It's like a little mini plane um, airport. It's like a little mini airport at a bunch of these, a bunch of these trains. It, it's a whole different vibe in the world alongside Japan. And France actually does have extremely fast service. Helps that a lot of the trains, a lot of the cities in France don't want you to drive cars everywhere, as opposed to America, where we want everybody to blow several tens of thousands of dollars on a car and be on the hook forever, because our economy is based on a series of cons. Service to back up that high-speed rail network. While your German friends are halfway between Frankfurt and Berlin on the ICE, you'll have traveled from Paris to Lyon and already be on a tram enjoying the city. I should also say the way that the TGV infrastructure has basically started to wrap around eastern and southern Paris is truly incredible and just awesome. Even though unfortunately trains don't through route through Paris in service. Fortunately, the city kind of gets away with this because its high-speed rail bypass line to the east hits both Charles de Gaulle Airport and Euro Disney, which is just awesome. 
In fact, those major travel destinations are even accessible on some of the international services which come in from other countries. And generally, the international high-speed rail services into France are excellent, with connections into Spain, Italy, Germany, Switzerland, and the Netherlands and Belgium. Better yet, that's the other level of different. Uh, what makes things different going on a, you know, the, the, the French European train system as opposed to going to America. It's just you feel closer to other countries on a train in France than you do on a plane, than you do to other states on a plane in the U.S. Arriving in the big cities, as in Germany, you'll be dropped off right in the city center. Albeit, if you want to go to a small town, you should get on the slow train. And it's not all great. France still stubbornly refuses to use electrical multiple units, despite oh, basically right. the rest of the world already adopting them. The network in the country is also incredibly Paris-centric, and probably too much so for its own oh, good. Isn't that France in fourth in place, we have Italy. <laughs> I recently covered Italy in a High Speed Rail Explained video, and suffice to say, it has become really good at high speed rail. Call it recency bias, but from the... It, no, I... It, it is a thrill going around Italy on the trains. An absolute thrill. There, there, there's no way to put it properly into words. It, it's, just, it's just wild, especially coming out of the U.S. Oh, I recommend it. I recommend it. I really do. Uh, just don't do what we had to do and cart around a wheelchair. Although, that being said, Italy is more or less um, pretty open about that. The Vatican isn't. The rest of Italy, they're, they're, they're really cool about that. Actually, where you want to bring a wheelchair, if you want to go into a museum, you're going to have those big lines that wrap around the whole next couple blocks. Just come up with a wheelchair, they'll let you right in. High quality, high speed rail infrastructure to the modern, beautiful station. I know what you're thinking. Oh, I don't want to take that from somebody who actually needs a wheelchair. Okay, tell you what, if you see a line of people at the handicap access. Even if just a few people, don't do it. You know, cave into your, you know, give into your better feelings. I, I respect that. I admire that. If there isn't one, go right in, because that way they're going to keep that door open. People, they know people are using it. They're going to keep that door open. Now you're actually helping out. And infrastructure designed by Starkitex to the sleek red trains and the Star affordable Trek. service. Italy has so much to offer with its high speed rail. The service is so good that it had a noticeable impact on Alitalia, the national air carrier of Italy. And if that isn't a sign that your high speed rail network is doing the right things, I'm not sure what is. The only real complaint I have about Italian high speed rail is that it doesn't do a great job today of covering southern Italy. And it oh, that's. If being Paris centric is, is France in a nutshell, and not doing enough for southern Italy is Italy in a nutshell. <laughs> it also doesn't serve Canada, which would be great. But truly, given a country that might not be great at high speed rail today, or might not even have high Look speed rail today, colors, I'm not sure there's a nice better story. model That's to me. ambitiously quickly spin up into one of the best countries in the world for it than Italy. In third place, we actually have a tie between Japan and Ooh. Spain, both of which are high-speed rail legends. I mean, I kind of saw it coming. I mean, we all knew it was going to be with Japan because I called that. I thought it was going to be even higher up on the list. But, you know, I was kind of starting to suspect that with uh, with Spain when he brought that up because he mentioned the centralization helps him. As I understand it, if there's one place that's even more centralized than France, it's going to be Spain. Anyone who's played the new Pokemon games knows how centralized Spain is. But albeit with different strengths and weaknesses. What's funny is that in many ways I see Spain and Japan as being different sides of the same coin when it comes to high speed rail. Spain is notable for its massive network, which it managed to integrate with its mainline railways despite them using a completely different gauge. This was by developing an entirely new novel gauge changing train technology, which you can learn more about in my dedicated Spanish high speed rail explained video. Japan, by comparison, feels like the opposite. Its network is incredibly lean, despite the country being significantly larger in terms of population. And the instead population. of building a lot of rail lines, Japan essentially just runs an sure enormous amount of. Spain is. Spain and Japan both have a thing where they are not the size that. They are not the size in reality that they are in your head. They just aren't. Trains on what is essentially a single country spanning high speed rail trunk. 
Unfortunately though, one that forces you to change trains in Tokyo, even if it isn't that inconvenient. <laughs> At the end of the day though, if your high-speed rail service is more frequent than the average American subway, it's pretty good. Now, the contrast extends to trains as well. While Japan absolutely makes all of its own stuff, Spain has imported trains from all over the place, with Alstom trains from France, Siemens trains- Which basically means, I guess, if you're a train fanatic, you wanna go to Spain from Germany, and Talgo and CAF trains domestically from Spain. And while Spain focused on perfecting the gauge-changing train, Japan instead focused on perfecting fast trains on standard gauge. Unfortunately, the experience of using high-speed rail in- I, do, I just know there's a whole bunch of people playing Scarlet and Five, and they're like, well, why dang could we use a train to get everywhere? Well, to be fair, it's the one game where you could instantly fly or whatever anywhere, and that, that feels like they're- version of the highly convenient train system. Spain isn't always great because you have to go through airport style security at the station, which just removes one of the nice features of train travel in most places. By comparison, in Japan, getting on a high-speed train is as simple as going through a turnstile and walking to your platform at what is usually a pretty small station. They even have platform gates at a large number of high-speed rail stations in Japan, which is something that basically only exists in Japan. So that's it for our third and effectively second place countries, Japan and Spain. So what's number one? In first place, we have, to almost no one's surprise, China. China had no high speed rail 20 years ago. And today, it has more high speed rail than the rest of the world combined. The country based much of what it built off of best practices from Japan, which was really smart because obviously Japan is very good at high speed rail. And that all allowed China to create the first high-speed rail network that's truly scaled that to the size of a big nice. country, like nice China. And I think that's the thing that makes it the most amazing. We're not talking about the UK or France or Japan here, we're talking about- a And yes, incidentally, I am counting China as New World, just by default, because when you have that high-powered central power base, you can just do whatever it wants, it means you can get rid of any old stuff you want which is really, really good for building a great train system. A big country, from its massive elevated rail corridors to pretzel-like high-speed rail junctions, affordable fares, some of the fastest trains in the world, China's high-speed rail network just has a lot going for it. And that's not to mention new ideas that are cropping up, like high-speed rail sleepers, which in a big country could be the thing that kills a lot of short-haul flights. Ultimately, the network is a marvel of modern engineering and innovation. That being said, like every other network on this list, China's high-speed rail network is not perfect. For one, the Chinese high-speed rail system suffers from the same airport security problem that Spain's system has. China but that's made worse by the stations, which often feel like they're located no. roughly where an airport should be on the outskirts of a city. Oh, now fortunately right. in China's case, since so many of China's large cities are growing rapidly, and since these cities tend to have big rapid transit networks, in a lot of cases the city goes to the high-speed rail network, as opposed yeah. to the reverse yeah. happening. It's worth mentioning though yeah. that since China has such a big high-speed rail network, it's not a uniform thing. Some cities like Beijing, for example, have stations that are quite centrally located and convenient for visiting the urban center itself, and so it's not uniformly bad with stations deep in the exurbs of the cities. Yeah, There's also the issue of overbuilding. Well, it's clearly valuable to have, there, frankly, like multiple awesome. lines between Beijing and Shanghai, for example. You probably don't need a high-speed rail line to lines. Inner Mongolia. Anyways, with that, we have my top 10 high-speed rail networks in the world ranked. I'm curious how you would rank the world's top 10 high-speed rail networks, so let me know in the comments down below, and yeah, I'll see you next time. But obviously, number one is going to be the Denizen Islands from my tropical games. If you want to see me try to build a tropical islands using only public transportation and no cars, then send me money. If you don't have a way to send me money, that sounds like a you problem. Okay. Alright, like, comment, subscribe, let me know how my little experiment is going.